Hello everyone, it's me, Vivi, and welcome to another Crash Bandicoot 4 video. There's something I want to dive deeper into, and it has to do with the Dingo Dial and Tana. Basically, the side characters that got introduced in this brand new Crash game. Right off the bat, what disappointed me in this game was, like I said previously, the lack of cutscenes in certain areas. In other words, I wish Crash 4 had given us more screen time with Dingo and Tana. Especially the part where these two meet up and decide to team up with us. It's like Toys for Bob brought fan favorites in this game just for the sake of extra character slots. That's what Crash 4 felt like, I love this game, I do. It's the best one compared to the Insane Trilogy. But I wish this game could have delivered more in terms of these two specific characters. Let me start off with Dingle Dial. The very first time we saw a reveal of him, I wondered, huh, Dingle used to be a bad guy hired by Cortex in Warped. In this game, he's enjoying his retired life and wants to find his way back home. Instead of exploring his character a bit more, he's just another playable character. Some folks bring up the term padding in Crash 4. Here's where I agree on that. We have timelines for Dingo. Instead of constantly having to replay half of the level as either Crash or Coco, why not have used that space of the level to fit more of Dingo? If anything, make the level slightly longer while at it. The game could have utilized that extra space for extra cutscenes. Instead of padding out timelines like that, they could have used that extra time for more character development. It just felt like, hey, Dingo's a popular character, let's throw him in Crash 4. Maybe I had too high hopes for the lore side of this game, and that's my fault. But I hope we can all agree on two things. As stated before, Dingo finds himself getting sucked in or jumps in any vortex. It's a convenient plot device, if I do say so myself. I mean, if Dingo was planned playable more than once, might as well go with him just entering vortexes, right? Then out of the blue, Tana finds him somewhere. With no scene whatsoever, we simply get a mention of her finding Dingo. Like before, with all those timelines and having to replay half of a level, why couldn't Toys for Bob just throw in some little extra simple scenes where these two cross paths? The other thing, he was hired by Cortex and Warped, in this scene, this is something I did bring up in the past. Sure, Cortex reacts looking at his facial expression, but Dingo doesn't even break a sweat. Nor does Cortex, for that matter. Like, they used to know each other through evil schemes. And now you tell me Dingo's not going to say anything about it? Or reflect on his past adventures? Just one reaction would have sufficed. One sentence. One little remark would have made such a great difference. The first time we saw his diner, I had imagined that either Tropy or Cortex caused the diner to blow up. Thinking about it, Ripper Roo was spotted in offbeat right before the level ends. Ripper Roo is, as a matter of fact, included in the enemy art gallery of Crash 4. It makes you wonder, if initially Cortex and Tropy were planning on rehiring Dingo, you know, persuade him, telling him, hey, if you join our team, we'll fix your diner, you know, lies. His restaurant exploding honestly felt like insurance. Toys for Bob made it so they could come up with any reason as to how his diner blew up. Either blame the enemies in the level or Cortex. From what we have, it just blew up probably because of TNT. But I really wonder, was Toys for Bob's original idea to have the diner blow up because of Entropy and Cortex desperately looking for, you know, minions? I mean, that could explain the random Vortex appearing in his restaurant. I mean, that alone. Cortex and Entropy trying to hire Dingo back, only for him to later refuse? That already sounds more interesting. There was potential for more when it comes to Dingo Dial. Now, the same applies for Tana. Tana, basically, it's uh, the same scenario as Dingo. Stuff happens in the game. The story takes a drastic dark turn. Female Entropy basically throwing a bombshell at us, mentioning that she killed her friends. But that's it, afterwards, nothing. That right there. The fact her crash and Coco from her dimension died by the hands of this female Entropy, I mean, that right there, they could have gone even deeper. But then comes the question, but it does story matter in Crash Bandicoot. Crash was known for its gameplay element. With the way this game was presented by Toys for Bob, 
It seemed as if they were going deeper into the story of these characters. Well, at least they tried to. And it shows how a Crash game can be even greater if the story element was much more present. The very first moment we meet Tana, we wonder what happened to her dimensions Crash and Coco. Perhaps you thought uh, they died, at first glance. Okay, they did in the end, and that's it. We don't have Crash and Coco questioning Tana about it afterwards. It's like they throw in this bombshell, and that's it. Pretty anticlimactic if you ask me. Zero scenes of her meeting Dingo along the way. Like, does Tana know Dingo in her dimension? Did she have her own version of Dingo? Why is she traveling to different dimensions in the first place? At least Dingo got sucked into one. He was trying to find his way back home afterwards. But as for Tana, she's just there, playable. But then you wonder why. What's her motive? Is she trying to go after a female entropy? This scene here, judging by her expression, maybe she was trying to hunt her down. But it's not made very evident. All we know about Tana is she flies solo. Something I've been wondering as well, which is a bit confusing to me, maybe you guys can explain this to me. During this scene in the Bermugula's orbit with uh, the year being a mystery, she ties up Crash and Coco fearing that she might lose them in this dimension too. The way this is worded, you mean to tell us that her dimension is part of this universe? The Bermugula's orbit being part of her space? I mean, was her homeland the Salty Wharf 1717 because that's where we first meet her? Was she already traveling from one dimension to another? Look, if what Tana says in this scene is true, that she lost her friends in this dimension, then how do we explain her first encounter? Before Entropy and Cortex ripped the space-time continuum, no one could travel to different dimensions. So does this mean that the Bermugula is actually her home dimension? That being her version of space? From the looks of this place, it appears to be our Entropy space station. Or, what could make more sense, both Entropies have the same look in the lab. You know, plot convenience. Long story short, are we supposed to believe that Tana's Crash and Coco originated from the Bermugula's orbit? You know, that dimension? Last thing, are we to believe that Toys for Bob is scrapping our own Tana from our universe? I mean, we have an alternate Tana playing a video game here. I mean, I'm really curious to know what they exactly plan to do with our own Tana, if they're ever planning on going back to the original Tana. So yeah, with that said folks, I think I've said plenty for this video. As per usual, don't be shy to leave your own thoughts in the comment section below. For example, what do you think of Dingle Dial and Tana in Crash 4, in terms of how they were handled? Do you feel like they needed more character development, extra scenes, or whatnot? Leave your thoughts, alright? And yeah, I've been Vivi and thank you so much for watching. Until next time.